Hey guys, so surprise surprise, Wilson out of nowhere just released with this expansion, we call it Chronicle, and Chronicles are basically like a league in Path of Exile or a season in Diablo 3, and this one is called Blood Trail, or as I call it, Monster Hunter Event. And in this video I wanna give you a, like a general information about what they have changed, how the game feels now, and is it worth buying? I mean, for me it was always worth buying because over time I, I got my, my enjoyment out of it, but I hope that this video is gonna help you decide if you wanna buy the game or if you wanna return to the game. This is a very extensive and long list of all the changes. But I'm not gonna go over everything, instead I'm gonna mention things that people are most interested in, or at least what people have asked me about, and also in my opinion the biggest and noticeable changes. Now to start off, I think the first question that, or the main question that people ask, how are bugs? Is it playable now? Personally, I only experienced very minor bugs, mostly with sounds disappearing and sometimes crashing. I went to check forums to see what bugs are people reporting and it doesn't seem to be overwhelming amount of issues for anything specific, but it has been only like what 2 or 3 days. I'm doing well the end game, I'm still not very high level, I'm doing like level 67 zone, but I did not experience anything game breaking. So I would say if you are worried about bugs, the game is in a much better state than it was first released. Now when it comes to changes, I'm gonna mention a couple things uh, fast and then talk about them more extensively. There is now a loot filter. We also have pets. Rework crafting window, so you can actually see the mods and mod roles. Changes to how attributes affect your character's uh, damage and skills. A bunch of new modifiers for all the skills. And the Blood Rail Chronicle is, uh, like I said, like a monster hunter. You find like corpses on the ground, you click on them and then you begin the event. You follow the trail until the next point, which uh, then gives you an option to choose different modifiers. You do this couple times until you encounter the final boss. There are a couple different versions of the final boss and there are lots of new different modifiers before the boss. And the final boss uh, from the blood trail is gonna drop items with special modifiers. And that special modifier is like a dual mod. One is gonna be positive mod and another is gonna be negative mod. To be honest, those mods don't seem to be very interesting like 8% increased damage but uh, reduced ailment chance. So it doesn't seem to give anything unique. But nonetheless you can get pretty strong mods. Also to quickly mention, the blood trail can be encountered everywhere in the expeditions, actually in every single expedition. But but during the campaign it has predetermined spots where it can appear. So while doing the campaign you're not gonna encounter it as often. And talking about the campaign, if you want to experience the blood trail you have to create a new character and do the campaign for the first time. The second character in that uh, blood trail can skip the campaign but the first still has to finish the campaign. And the campaign doesn't really have anything new, it just introduces you to this blood trail. It even feels like blood trail was planned right from the start, it just merges with the campaign very well. And I assume that's the idea, once uh, we get like a Chronicle 2, Chronicle 3, it's just gonna feel like the previous Chronicles are gonna go into the core game and it's gonna be part of the core game. By the way, just a quick tip, if you want to finish campaign faster, just select the campaign mode instead of normal mode. It's gonna make everything much easier and you can get to the end game sooner. And talking about the end game, the end game is still the same, but you do get an additional thing to upgrade, which is part of the blood trail, and like a full proper quest. But once you complete it, you can actually upgrade and craft a higher level version of that quest. I believe it's level 80 and I'm not sure if you can get any higher than level 80. And that's supposed to give you better rewards, I haven't tried level 81 yet. By the way, I'm not gonna spoil the quest, but it has something to do with dragons. It still feels like it's missing like a big uh, big bad boss at the end and you are basically grinding gears to be able to grind higher gears to be able to grind even higher gears. Which is basically like Diablo 3, right? You're doing rifts. But now I want to transition into I guess my favorite subject, which is builds. This expansion was uh, trying to make more skills endgame viable. The attribute uh, changes, the skill changes, the skill modifier changes, the passive skill tree changes. All of those things enabled more builds that can work even in the endgame. Starting with the attribute changes. In previous versions, bonuses to damage from attributes were way too important. Hectors could reach more than 600% damage just by investing in their attributes. As a result, bonus damage from other sources, like items and gate of fate, had close to no impact. So we reduced the amount of damage given by the attributes but made it multiplicative with other sources of damage. The score system is also changing. If you remember how previously you used to lose critical strike chance and attack speed every time you level up, 
well no more also on items for example if you see one percent to attack speed that will literally give you one percent additional attack speed like if you had 40 percent attack speed and you get one percent on some item you're gonna have 41 percent attack speed you're gonna notice those changes on the passive skill tree as well like for example it used to give plus 50 to attack speed score and now it gives plus six percent instead and that feels so much better if you want you can go full attack speed or cast speed build while still getting damage from agility now now all the spells are also scaling with your weapon damage including minions so if you want your spells to do more damage or minions do more damage just equip a weapon with higher base damage and that's pretty massive for spellcasters because previously there was no reason to like keep upgrading your stuff if you get like really good mods on it but now there is because upgrading stuff also means more damage when talking about the skills there also feels like there are more interesting builds for example i'm playing with, with this blade storm or like a cyclone <laughs> or willing whatever you want to call it and there is a skill modifier which has chance to proc chain lighting when i crit so it's basically like playing cast and crit build in path of exile and each skill at the bottom also has the conversion skill modifiers i can convert this skill from physical into fire for example into shadow or poison or stuff like that each skill has a slightly different variations it still requires three passive points so you, you're gonna have to make a decision another cool example the lighting skill the arc thing has a skill modifier which strikes all nearby enemies when when you crit with it or strikes the single target with lighting when you crit so i think overall there are more interesting modifiers for skills not all the skills have something like more unique and talking about unique items we have also received some changes because previously legendary items were so much better than most of the uniques now uniques are also a bit stronger or a lot stronger i'm actually not sure by how much stronger but it seems that they are still pretty rare to find there is an npc that can sell uniques and i was finding that npc very frequently while doing the campaign but i have yet to find that npc while doing expeditions so i'm like level 57 and i only got like five uniques so even if the end game still feels pretty much the same i still want to make even more builds even if i reach the end game and farm more items because i want to experiment with other builds so i'm pretty sure you can spend quite a lot of time testing out and, and trying out new builds and that's why in my opinion it's definitely worth buying this game and previously i was very hesitant to recommend buying this game but i think it's in a good state now by the way wilson is currently on sale and i think it's gonna last for like 24 hours depending on when i manage to upload this video even if you don't plan on playing this game for months or even weeks you can still later come back and i'm sure it's gonna have like a chronicle 2 chronicle 3 in the future and gonna have new things new balances new skills by the way i forgot to mention there is only one new skill but i think it's fine because we, we got so many new modifiers for old skills so yeah i didn't really talk about pets too much because they are just the cosmetic on the website they say that the pets are supposed to help you pick up items that are too far away from you but i'm not too sure about that and you do get some pets for free which by the way show you where the blood trail is if you go too far away from it and i think i was supposed to get some drake pet but i did not get it not sure why also didn't get my twitch drop for now <laughs> but then again pets are just cosmetic and i don't really care about that the loot filter i also didn't really talk much about it it's nice but it could be a bit more advanced it only filters each item by rarity like for example if you're playing melee and you want to hide all the sorcerer's items you just make it only show like legendary or unique sorcerer's items but there is no way to filter items by mods so yeah i think overall the game is in a much more interesting and better state and i especially like the blood trail some of the challenging mods can be very interesting like you can get a bunch of uh, chests that you need to break and uh, those chests have very high chance of dropping legendaries some of them require you to stand in a circle in, it's like a king of the hill style uh, challenge i also found one really cool challenge which allowed me to tame a boss and it was really cool but it kind of got stuck <laughs> So I could not bring that boss to the boss of that zone. Would have been interesting to watch a boss fight another boss. 
but the tame boss was weaker than before taming it. I assume it was not getting the, the modifiers that made it stronger. Oh, and also hunting those big bosses, you can gain a hunt trophies, which uh, you use as a currency to buy items from a new NPC. So yeah, the blood hell I think is very fun. So if you want to kill some time before cyberpunk or if you're not planning on playing cyberpunk, I definitely think that this game is worth trying it out at least. Let me know in the comments below what you think about the game in its current state and also share your cool build ideas. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.